Hi everybody, today what I want to do is I want to look at a two-dimensional elastic collision. So this could be like a billiard ball, a cue ball that's going to strike uh, another ball that is initially stationary. So only the cue ball's moving, pop, and then they both go off at different angles. Okay, so I've got the diagram set up over here. So let's see how we set up conservation of momentum. And now if it's a... Uh, elastic collision, it means we also have conservation of kinetic energy. And at the end, let's get an expression for uh, both of these angles, the angle theta and the angle phi for this collision. All right, again, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and ask some questions down below in the comments section. I'll get back to you. All right, let's go. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got the cue ball here moving at some initial velocity. The cue ball has a mass m1. It's going to strike this green ball, which has a mass M2, which is initially stationary. So there's no velocity right here. And then we have them going off at an angle. So what we're going to first do here is, again, the angle theta is the angle relative to the x-axis for this green ball. And the angle phi is the angle for this uh, light blue ball. So let's go ahead and start by considering momentum in the x direction. So let me just go ahead and write this. Um, so momentum uh, in x direction. So what we want to do is write an expression for conservation. Okay, although there's a collision, there's no external force on the system. So what we have here initially is we simply have this m1 and v1 initial. That's it. Mass m2 doesn't have any momentum in the x direction. So forget about it. That's it. This is the total momentum before the collision. So after the collision, what do we have? Well, after the collision, we have this guy moving and it's going to have a component here. This is the component along the X direction, right? This is V1 final uh, X direction. Uh, V2 also has a X component. This is V2 uh, final along the X direction. So again, if this is the angle theta, that means here's the angle theta and this is gonna be the angle phi. So we should be able to write now for the mass m1, the momentum in the x direction after the collision looks like this. It's v1 final, and it's going to be cos of the angle phi. All right, good. And now the last one here is this guy right here, right? We have a mass m2. Its velocity in the x direction is this, and the component I can write just right away in terms of v2 final as long as I use the cos of the angle theta in this case. All right, so that's it. That's what we have for the x direction. Now we also need an expression for momentum. Should also be conserved in the vertical direction, right? That's our y direction. So let's go ahead and write that expression. What do we have in this? This one's a little bit easier, I find, because initially this guy is only moving in the x direction. This guy's not moving. So that means we have zero momentum in the uh, y direction before the collision. After what we have, well, look at our velocity vectors right here. Let me make them in a different color. Right? We have a component of V2 final in the y direction. That's this guy right here. And we also have a component of V1 final in the y direction. So that means we have momentum in the vertical direction for each one of these objects. So let's go ahead and put them on the right-hand side of our equation over here and for the y direction. So let's do this one first, okay? We have a mass m2. The vertical component of that velocity, if I write it just in terms of a v2f, okay? What I could write is v2f. And this here should be sine of the angle theta, okay? And I have it as a positive value because that's pointing up. And according to this coordinate system right here, uh, this guy here should be pointing up. All right, what else do we have? We have V1 final down over here in the vertical direction, and it's pointing down. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to introduce a small negative sign here. So the mass is M1. Uh, this is V1 final, and now I also need sine. It's a different angle on that side, though. It's sine of the angle phi. All right, that's pretty good so far. Next thing we have is this is an elastic collision, we said. All right, it's in two dimensions, but it's elastic. So what does that mean? That means we have actually another question, uh, another equation that we can write, and it's conservation of kinetic energy. 
So what you have to do is look at the total kinetic energy before the collision, and that has to be equal to the total ener kinetic energy after the collision. So this one's pretty straightforward if you remember how you define kinetic energy. So before we only have one thing moving, so the kinetic energy is straightforward. It's one half uh, M1 and it's V1 initial squared. That's it. This one has no kinetic energy because it's not moving. And now we have two objects that are moving. Uh, let's do the M1 first. It's moving at a different velocity. So this is V1 final, right? That's the speed of that object. That's it, and I have to square that thing. And plus one half, we have a different mass over here that's moving over here at a speed of V2 final. So that's it. So if you look at all of our equations here, we're gonna have equation one, two, and equation three. If you understand these, you're all set. Now we can go back and we have to do a little bit of math in order to look at what's going on in more detail. Again, my goal is to kind of look at what's going on after the collision. So let's rewrite these and manipulate them to get to an expression that links this angle to that one. All right, so here are my three equations. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an assumption. All right, I'm going to assume, again, we're playing billiards here. So we're going to assume here that the mass M1 and M2 are actually going to be the same mass, okay? And that's kind of true for kind of standard billiard balls. Now, if they're not the same, then everything that follows is going to be different. But just to simplify some of the algebra, because otherwise you've got three equations here and it can get rather complicated. So if you look, if this is simply the mass, you notice here it's going to simplify this quite a bit. I can cancel them out because they're all the same. Here also, I can cancel it out. It's the same as this guy right here. Now, this one here, I can cancel out the masses because they're all the same, so you can divide through. In addition, for the last equation, our kinetic energy equation, I can also get rid of this factor of one-half because it's the same for all the terms. All right, so let's just rewrite this because we've cleaned up the equations quite a bit here. So we have our first one, V1 initial equals to V1 final, uh, cos of the angle phi, and then plus V2 final, cos of the angle theta. All right, so this is a new equation one. It's one prime. Uh, how about the second one? Now, this one's also pretty easy. Uh, V2 final, sine of the angle theta. Now, don't forget our negative sine, which is important. Uh, V1 final, sine of the angle phi. And this becomes my equation uh, two prime. And the uh, kinetic energy equation boils down to this one. It's V1 initial. Now, it's squared. Don't forget that term and v1 final squared and plus v2 final squared all right good job now this is my third equation it's a little bit different so i call it three prime all right so we have three equations now we still have to do a little bit of math in order to solve for this all right one thing i want to do now to do a little bit of algebra since the third one here involves the squared terms i don't really want to touch that one just yet i'm just going to move it over we'll come back to that one in a minute Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to square each one of these equations. So what happens if I square the first one? I get a V1 initial squared, and that's it for that term. Now what if I square this whole term? All right, if I square this whole term, I should get a term that looks like this. Uh, cos of the angle phi squared plus V2 squared, cos of the angle theta squared. And then I get the cross term, right? The cross term should look like uh, two, uh, V1 final, V2 final, and then I get the multiplications of both cosine terms. All right, that's it. So this becomes a new equation one, which is now one prime prime. Okay, now let's square the second one. So the second one is I square this side, that's fine. This here becomes V2F squared, sine squared of theta, uh, plus v1 final squared sine phi squared and then i get the cross term between both of them there's going to be a negative sign here it's v1 final v2 final and then the sign of both terms sine of phi and sine of theta all right now one thing i could do let's label this one here a new equation two prime prime and let's not forget that through all of this i still have my equation three, which is still a true statement that comes from conservation of kinetic energy. 
These two simply comes from conservation of momentum, and I squared both of them, so that's still true. What I want to do now is I want to add both of those equations. Okay, this math gets a little bit more complicated, so let's go on the next page. All right, so if I add both equations, you see what I get here on the left-hand side? This doesn't change. It's V1 initial squared equals. Now let's add both of those terms. All right, look, at we have the V2 final. So let's kind of group some of the terms together. We have this and this. That'll get grouped together. And then we have a V1 final term. Those will get grouped together. Okay, so when we add them up, it should look something like this. So let's do the V1 final squared term first. It has a cos of phi and a sine of phi. All those terms are squared. Okay, that should look kind of familiar to you. The next ones are the V2 final squared. This becomes cos squared of theta uh, plus sine squared of theta. Okay, and now we have to do deal with both of those terms. So again, those ones I'll factor out the common part, which is 2v1 final, v2 final, and then we get this kind of big angular mess here. We get cos of phi, uh, cos of theta, and then the negative sign I'll distribute it through right here. So it's sine of phi and sine of theta. All right, following me, it's like quite a big mess. However, there are a lot of simplifications that come up now. First of all, have a look at this, right? If you did some trigonometry in your life, that should look familiar to you. This guy should also look familiar to you, right? Both of those things are simply equal to one, right? That's an identity. It's one of the first identities you learn when you do trigonometry. Now, how about this guy down here in the curly bracket? This one might not look as familiar to you, okay? But this is also a trigonometric identity. This, you're able to rewrite it as cos of the sum of both of those angles plus theta. And this is kind of an important uh, kind of substitution that we're going to do. So let's rewrite this entire new equation that we have. So we have V1 initial squared equals to V1 final squared plus V2 final squared. I don't have to write these anymore. It's simply 1 plus... 2 times v1 final, v2 final multiplied by cos of phi plus theta. Wow. All right. This equation is so important that I think we're going to need to put a box around it. It's kind of a crooked box, but that's okay. Let's go see it. All right. Now, this looks rather complicated. However, we can't forget this guy right here. Look what this says right here. Look what some of those terms look like. This here is this term right here. That's simply the initial velocity squared, which is equal to V1 final plus V2 final, which is exactly this, right? So that means these, this cancels with both of those terms because it's equal to each other. So at the end, this equation in the box really simplifies to this. I'm going to write it over here. Zero, I can get rid of those three terms. That comes from the kinetic energy. Get rid of those three terms. It's exactly what's written right here. This here must be equal to, let's switch back to black. Look at this, 2v1 final, v2 final, and cos of the sum of both of those angles. This is a remarkable result. How do you satisfy this equation for any velocity v1 and v2 final? The only way you could satisfy is if cos of some angle gives me zero. And the only way I can have that is if the angle gives me 90 degrees. So at the end for a 2D collision, where the masses of the particles or the balls are the same, we require this statement right here, that the sum of both angles, they always scatter off each other at 90 degrees with each other. So guess what that means? If I go back to this diagram and someone was going to tell me that, oh, this angle is 35 degrees, I automatically know that if the sum has to be 90 degrees, um, this here has to be 55 degrees. It can't be anything else. Okay, so kind of a nice example of a 2D elastic collision. I used all of our equations here. I did some algebra, and I actually like to prefer to manipulate the momentum equations first. 
And by squaring them, I find if you kind of try to manipulate the kinetic energy equation first, you can get into some trouble with the math. I think it gets way more complicated because you'll have some square root terms, which is not easy to deal with. All right, anyway, hopefully this kind of helps you kind of see how you set a problem up and do some algebraic steps to simplify and get to an answer, but kind of a nice result. Thanks for watching.